This week for EMN5, we're going to review tricyclic antidepressant toxicity, or TCA toxicity. And one of the really tricky things about this overdose is that TCAs have a lot of different mechanisms all throughout the body, and therefore the symptoms that you see in the toxicity can really vary quite greatly. So for example, it blocks serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake, and that can result in seizures. Another thing it can do is have an anticholinergic effect, and anticholinergics have a toxidrome. In fact, this one has a little saying that goes with it. So this is the mad as a hatter, in that the patient can be confused, have some altered mental status, blind as a bat. This refers to the mydriasis, meaning the pupils can be very dilated, hot as a hair, uh, red as a beet, and dry as a bone. So just to review, they're going to be very hot, flushed, their pupils will be really big. So it's actually very similar to a sympathomimetic toxidrome. However, the difference is they're going to be very dry, so they're not going to be sweaty. So the anticholinergic toxidrome, it can also have alpha-adrenergic blockade, and this can lead to the hypotension that you see. And lastly, it has a sodium channel blockade, and this is probably the most dangerous one for the patient. It can cause a widened QRS and therefore some different tachyarrhythmias. Now this presentation is a pretty fast one. You can usually start seeing symptoms within about two hours of ingestion. And things you're going to look out for, so in neuro, altered mental status, seizures that we talked about, anticholinergics, you're going to look for them, their skin exam, they can be hot, dry, flushed, look at their pupil exam, you should see the big dilated pupils. And then for cardiac, again, we talked about hypotension, and you might see some tachycardia and arrhythmias. The first thing to do for management is obviously get involved with poison control. They can help you determine if the dose is going to be significant or not, and also help the management. The next thing I want you to do is get an EKG. This is really important, and there's two things you're going to look for here. The first is a widened QRS, and the second is a dominant R wave in AVR. So you can see this R wave here in AVR. Here's it blown up. It's really big. It's going to be greater than 3 millimeters. And these two things are basically pathognomonic for TCA toxicity. In fact, if you're concerned about any patient, maybe a patient who comes in altered, you're not sure what they took, get an EKG. It can be really helpful. You're going to look for that wide QRS and the dominant R wave. It might give you some clues that maybe this is a TCA toxicity. And interestingly enough, the QRS can actually hold some prognosis for you. If it's greater than 100, that patient actually has an increased seizure risk. And if it's greater than 160, that patient has risk of going into VTAC. So for the treatment of TCAs, you're going to start off with your ABCs, IVO2 monitor, establish an airway if you need one, and make sure and get that EKG. The second thing is decontamination if you're within the first two hours of ingestion and they have a safe airway. They're awake enough and they can tolerate it. You can give them activated charcoal at one gram per kilogram. And then the closest thing that we have to an antidote for TCA toxicities is the sodium bicarb. And you're going to give that when you see either a patient who's hypotensive, is having arrhythmias, or the QRS is greater than 100. So you're going to give the sodium bicarb. And the interesting thing here is you're actually going to keep repeating that dose and you're titrating to an improving blood pressure and a narrowing QRS. So you're actually going to get an EKG over and over again, and you're going to watch for that QRS to start narrowing. Now, if that's refractory, some other things you can consider is IV lidocaine and also slight hyperventilation of the patient. There's a couple things that are contraindicated in TCA toxicity, so remember this, especially when you're thinking about the arrhythmias. You can't give physostigmine. So if a patient comes in who has an anticholinergic toxidrome, if there's any suspicion that they could have had a TCA, cannot give physostigmine. The other things to think about is the antiarrhythmic medication. For sodium channel blockers 1A and C, those are contraindicated, and so are 2, 3, and 4. So you can't give beta blockers, you can't give amiodarone, and you can't give calcium channel blockers. That's because this can worsen the sodium channel blocker inhibition, um, it can cause prolonged QTs, which can lead to VTAC, and it can also, some of these can worsen hypotension. So all of these things can make it worse. Make sure you remember which medications are contraindicated. And lastly, for TCA toxicity treatment, we're going to think about a supportive care. So if they have very low blood pressure, you can consider pressors such as norepinephrine, and also if they're having seizures or they need to be sedated, benzodiazepines is your go-to. Now, if the patient remains asymptomatic and you've observed them for about six hours, they're not having any abnormalities in your EKG, no alterations in their mental status, they're not tachycardic, you can probably medically clear them. But you should consider if they need a psychiatry evaluation if there's any concern that this is intentional. So three things to remember for TCA toxicity. Think about an anticholinergic toxidrome plus other things such as seizure, hypotension, and EKG abnormalities. Make sure you get an EKG. The two things you're looking for are a wide QRS and a dominant R wave in AVR greater than 3 millimeters. These are all caused by that sodium channel blockade.
And lastly, your treatment is sodium bicarb. This is the antidote for TCA toxicity, and you're going to watch for a narrowing QRS to make sure that your treatment is becoming effective. Here's some references, and thanks for joining us on EM in 5.